and welcome to another episode. We are now in our third season of Corgi Town USA. In my lapish chuckles are Spokes Korg, and in the studio, of course, we have the rest of the Corgi committee. That is Hammer, Booger, and Mortimer Barnabas. And typically, we have our fearless executive producer, a Cat Cohen. Napoli in the studio, but she had a little bit of car trouble this morning. So she is yes, joining indeed. us in her studio. Kat, introduce yourself to those who Hi, are new everyone. here. I'm Kat from Napoli, and uh, under my desk is Digby, the Duke, that is my corgi. Outside he of my office door is Wigan, he is the honorary corgi. And in the back part of the house are the two cats. They don't want to be honorary corgi. <laughs> they don't think it's worthwhile. Um, so uh, that would be Navu and Star Lord. And here at home, I get to have my coffee. Uh, and uh, has well has Mina been a guest on the show ever? I know you've done. No, just try to show. try to hard to nail her down. So uh, no, you're saying. You're talking about your coffee. I have the same coffee here. Um, dear audience, dear viewer, dear listener, we have uh, Chuckles' best friend is a corgi by the name of Jax, and his corg mom has a fantastic corgi roastery. We recommend that you check them out. Not only if you look at their website, she has an adorable corgi um, at Memento Coffee and Tea, that is with two T's, um, but you can actually get that coffee shipped to you in Kat and I can both attest, if you start drinking that coffee, it will ruin you for all other coffee, all pales in comparison. And if you have coffee anywhere else, I even travel with that memento coffee. Yeah, I, I give it as gifts. Yeah. Oh, people, people invite me over because they know I'm going to bring them coffee. <laughs> yeah, good excuse. So. As we are talking about this, if you are new here, every week we have a fresh episode about the corgi lifestyle, training, grooming, traveling with your corgi, um, basically being dog, being paw rinse in general um, and dog causes. And we thought I wanted to do some content about the queen the, um, and uh, Her Majesty's recent passing. And she, for us uh, and those listening and viewing know that that's been huge news in the Corgi yes. uh, community. We have been talking about uh, mourning the queen and we have some online friends that have, uh, they're kind of famous little Corgs there in the UK and they recently had some celebrity encounters and did some news broadcasts um, kind of centered around the queen and her Corgis. So should we bring them on? Absolutely. Let's, let's bring the whole family on. The whole family. Sam, welcome. Hello there. Thank you. <laughs> Kat's going to nerd out about all the cute little corgis. <laughs> if you are listening, please go over to our YouTube channel so that you can see. And Sam, we have Jam, Honey, and Snowden. Jam, Honey, and Snowden. <laughs> oh, I'm in love. I'm in love. I love them. Well, Sam, we so appreciate you taking time to tell us about your beautiful pack there. Can you please tell us about how you got started with corgis? Absolutely. So my journey was a very unexpected one. I have a 10-year-old Labrador. Um, so when she was six years old, I thought about getting a friend for her and thinking about a slightly smaller dog, something slightly more manageable, perhaps, something that wouldn't take too much of the bed as well. <laughs> And a corgi was ideal. I, I had heard about uh, terriers being quite quite snappy, and I just thought a corgi seemed quite charming. And the more I looked into them, um, I'm sure that I've seen and read a lot about the sort of Californian beach get-togethers, because it seems to be quite an event. So that informed me quite a lot, actually, mm -hmm. although many, many miles away, um, how much of a fan group and base they had. And so Jam was my very first corgi. She came from a farm in Wales, um, originally a herding family from the 1950s. So um, very true and genuine in terms yeah. of their purpose and stock at least. So my, my introduction was very random, but certainly not regretted at all. Yeah, oh, you have you have true Pembrokeshire corgi. Yeah, a Pembroke Welsh from Wales that did herding not too many generations ago. I mean, absolutely. That, yes. That is the trifecta of corgis. Yeah. You don't get any more authentic than that mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
ours uh mine's from california chuckles here he's from california so he's a cali corgi so do you hear that our friends they're royal so <laughs> i have to crack up though sam that you say i wanted something quote unquote more manageable and <laughs> doesn't take as much room up in the bed because i wouldn't call corgis yeah. either one of those adjectives yeah. I, I i just shook my head and rolled my eyes because uh, <laughs> so not a corgi. I, but you have three now so manageable enough? I think that um, in for a penny, in for a pound. I think, I think once you <laughs> are committed beyond having two dogs generally, then I think that your lifestyle changes anyway. Your walking routine, your work-life balance. Um, I think that they then became my hobby. And it was actually through COVID in lockdown that we then decided to breed her. And of her litter of five girls that she had, we decided to keep two, we just couldn't decide. I think that if we were being truthfully honest, we would have kept all five and we would have been the the, the mad people that lived at number four. Um, <laughs> but we had to just keep two. The, the others, we, we didn't do it for breeding in terms of purchasing and selling. They went to loving homes of friends that just fell in love with jam initially. Um, but yes, I, I, I agree with your eye roll <laughs> because <laughs> they, they aren't the most manageable, they are, it, I don't have kids and they are like my children. So yeah. I guess in a sense, they, they, they command and they expect that commitment from me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a whole lifestyle. I tell people that if you don't have corgis, it is like having a toddler. Um, they're yeah. not a background dog. They, they become yeah. your life. And those of us that have them wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely. So, yeah. So please tell us, I wanted to talk about, um, if you don't mind starting telling us about each corgi, if you want to tell us a little bit about their personality and their clerks, uh, sorry, quirks, <laughs> let, have them um, allow us to get to know them a little bit. Of course, absolutely, with pleasure. So um, Jam is our first corgi. She um, is the mum of the three. And so she is, I would say, the intrinsic matriarch. She continues to rule the roost. Um, we have a very playful and fun loving Labrador and Jam and her got on like a house on fire from day one. Jam's very cheeky. Um, she likes to win at everything, whether it's running up and down the stairs, whether it's throwing a ball and has to catch it first, whether it's, um, we, we live quite close to the river here in Windsor. And um, when they go for a swim, she has to swim the furthest. She has to jump in the first. She's, she's a, a leader by spirit and by nature. Um, but she's very, she's very loving. She's she's very much a daddy's girl. Um, likes nothing more than having a moment on my lap and having a stroke and a tickle. And when she's done, she'll wander off, but she'll come back when she wants more, but not when you ask her to. <laughs> she sounds like all corgi. <laughs> <laughs> very much so, yes. She doesn't stray from, from breed standard. Um, Snowden is um, perhaps the softest of all the girls. She is just behind my shoulder here. Um, she um, is uh, very much one that works and responds to love and affection. She wants to be by your feet and looks up at you with big watery doughy eyes, um, wanting affection. She she was um, one who I selected to go on telly with uh, the Queen's trainer um, a few weeks ago. And she served very well and did exactly what she needed to do. She sat and she posed and she, head tilted in all the right points <laughs> um but um yeah she's 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 a very sweet girl uh, a very what sweet, a good girl. girl yeah bless her um and then we've got Snowden, uh, uh, honey back here who is the the, the the sassy one she's very cheeky um very naughty very playful when <laughs> when i ask her to stay in her bed um, whilst I'm cleaning the kitchen, let's say, she's the first one to creep out and see if I'll say anything. She's the one that will try and steal the bones. Yes, hello. Steal the bones <laughs> off of everyone else. Um, and um, yeah, she's got a very much a, a live wire personality, but she's also the cutest, I would say. She's the one that gets the most compliments for being the prettiest. So I think she thinks she can get away with it. Sounds as though, yes. <laughs> Using her powers for her own gain. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> she flutters her eyelashes at me and I, and I can't resist. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I'm I'm powerless against those corgi charms, too. And absolutely. you talked about uh, 
you didn't want to be the the what did you say the crazy people in number four that's me I have four <laughs> and they keep finding me and I'm like well I can't say no to another corgi <laughs> I can identify with that so much a cat oh, would you, would you call Digby cheeky would we call Digby a cheeky corgi he's he's sleeping under my desk um a, a little bit uh he's mischievous he's very mischievous yeah yeah he's very mischievous um and uh he, he likes to think of himself as a big dog we have a you know we have our, our little pet coyote um that that always comes into the yard and i've got to make sure i when we go out i have to make sure that i'm tight on the leash because this little guy just thinks that he can get rid of uh he can get rid of our little coyote um and not a real works. pet coyote for those yeah, <laughs> listening viewing it's an unwelcomed visitor <laughs> yeah, I, I live in open desert and i have chickens so the two things that coyotes like no fences and chickens um yeah and and i will hear i will hear this one he can sense him without even seeing him in the house um so he's he's a pretty smart boy and he's a he's a, a healer um not uh not in the sense of working dog but he's a healer in the sense that he can sense when someone is emotionally uh is emotionally going through something uh we had friends over last night and Bree was uh talking about some of the things that she's gone through and he just got up from being next to me and went over to her and put his head down on her. So, and that's wow. how I ended up with him. Uh, he was an emotional healing dog. Amazing. He's a big empath for sure. Yes, absolutely. Well, I want to talk about Sam. Please uh, tell us about the uh, the recent encounter. So, um, we were talking about, and I wanted to. I I wasn't sure how I wanted to. I wanted to honor the queen. I mean, all of us corgi people uh, have yeah. felt the certain heartstring um, with Queen Elizabeth, and because she loves her corgis, and and we get it right. So I wanted to uh, do something commemorative and I thought, how could we do this? So I'm so honored to have you and your wonderful pack here because you've done some media there. So please tell us about the recent broadcast yeah. and the celebrity encounter. Again, it's come about rather randomly. So the day after the Queen passed away, I live in a little town called Eton, which is um, on the banks of the Thames, it's a little village, and across the river is Windsor. So I can see the castle from my bedroom. It's rather close by. And it, it, it's it's just something very commonplace for us. And so the day after she passed away, um, I went for my dog walk and I carried on walking. And I found myself outside the gates of the castle. There were flowers being put down. It was quite early in the morning, about 6.45 or so in the morning. And I was, I was just standing there taking it all in and I had the girls on their lead and more and more people sort of started coming over taking photographs and I thought oh that's very sweet but I can't really sort of take anything in because I'm sort of being pulled to one side <laughs> and I didn't really really think much of it standing outside Windsor Castle the day after the Queen passes away with three corgis wouldn't attract attention <laughs> so before I knew it um the sort of passers-by turned into a camera crew. And then before I knew it, then a French television station was about to go live. They asked me if I could say a few words. I willingly obliged. And that then turned into um, BBC and then Sky News and then uh, Associated Press. And before I knew it, I was there for about an hour just chatting to people, just sitting down with the girls, um, talking about the corgis and what it meant to have lost the Queen. and just thinking on your feet really about how you're feeling sort of quite numb and taking it all in mm -hmm. and I, I was just talking about how it felt that she was such a constant that the very first banknotes that I held or the very first stamp that I've ever seen had her head on it it seemed very odd to, to for her not to be around it's a bit like someone stay, saying the sky is green and the grass is blue it, it just didn't make sense so after that I had a I had to give my details out to a few of the producers just for, for data protection and so on. And I then had a phone call a day later asking, oh, we're actually doing a segment on um, a television show called This Morning. It's a bit like, I guess, your version of 
Good Morning America. Oh, yeah. Um, it's our sort of main sort of breakfast television show here in the UK. And they were doing um, a segment with a chap called Dr. Roger Munford. So Dr. Roger Munford is a dog psychologist, super interesting chap. And he was called in by the Queen when her pack of 13 corgis were fighting. And wow. he went in to, to counsel and to, to train. Um, so he went on, on uh, television with Snowden um, to explain a little bit more about the Queen's corgis and how he worked with them. So that was their first exposure, was a sort of 15, 20 minute uh, television interview and Snowden worked a treat. Wow. What an amazing story. I know. It, it's more than your 15 minutes of fame. And to work with the with the Queen's trainer, 13 Corgi. Psychologist. Psychologist. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. PhD. Yeah. PhD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has he, he has a uh, training school. I think he has about 40 uh, trainers all around the world that learn his method. Um, I've learned quite a lot about him. He's a, a super interesting chap. And what I found was perhaps the biggest compliment from him was he came off set holding Snowden on her lead. And he said, this dog is amazing. Her eye to camera coordination was is marvelous. If you breed her, you have to put me down on the list. And I thought, oh, bless, bless you, how kind. It was. It was really just quite an experience. Everything from a car picking us up from the house to take us into London, to getting our own dressing room. It was it was just a lovely experience. And I think that was just the icing on the cake. Oh, I love that. You yeah. you, you, you got celebrity treatment? Yes. <laughs> oh, I would have cried, and, uh, I think. Or, yeah, you would have, well, you would have cried. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I recall, Windsor Eat, Eaton is where the school, uh, the- That's right, yes. Eaton School. Um, yes. I, I went to Cambridge briefly. Um, and e Eaton, Windsor is about an hour, an hour and a half outside of London. Um, it's actually about, um, uh, there's a new train line. So it's 20 minutes now. Oh, okay. 20 minutes, about half an hour's uh, car ride away from, from London. If you were driving, let's say from Harrods um, to get to Windsor, it's about half an hour or so. Okay. Because I go, I go into London quite a bit with the girls. Um, so I always make sure loo breaks and things like that. We always make sure we time it. <laughs> so it's still a 30 minute limousine ride and car ride. Yeah. And... yeah. Nice. Oh my and gosh. so from, from that exposure, which was, which, which was just lovely. Um, Roger kept in touch with me and his office got in touch because he was then being interviewed by the BBC, um, a couple of days later. So I joined him in town two days later, um, for an interview with the BBC. And this time it was actually with myself on camera with the girls, um, just talking about our sort of opinion and perspective. As you can imagine also with most, most newsfeed, um, there wasn't too much to really say. So they were really, I think, getting members of the public involved in terms of their perspective and reminiscing as well, because there wasn't too much fact to come out other than the late queen laying in state and the public going to see her. Um, so it was a lot of opinions and fond remembrance. And that included obviously her affiliation um, with, with corgis. I, I, I always refer to it as she was the intrinsic matriarch. She put corgis on the map. Yes, Very for true. sure. Very true. I love it. And Living that close to Windsor, did you ever see the queen and her corgis walking around or? Um, no, I've I've never seen either, would you believe? I've lived here for 18 years. Um, wow. I think that um, walking the girls in town, they inevitably get quite a bit of attention. Um, if I walk um, outside the castle early enough, I, I'm, one of my most favourite memories was walking outside the castle very early in the morning and you can hear the Queen's bagpipe player playing and they would wake her up in the morning traditionally every day with a bagpiper. Um, so walking outside the castle, hearing the bagpipe player and um, people very gingerly coming up to me to ask, excuse me, are those the Queen's corgis? So it was so <laughs> early in the morning. They would just yeah. wonder whether I was um, out, for, out for an amble with the royal corgis. I, I felt very flattered that they thought so much of me, but <laughs> I had to politely decline. Well, you know that we call that the paparazzi. 
Yes. And we have that is real. And I have friends that uh, when we first started getting to know each other, when I when new friends come into my life and I say, I'm going to take the corgis because I, I take my corgis as many places as I can. And mm -hmm. my friends will say, this is insane. You can't go anywhere without people getting cr going crazy over your corgis. I'm like, I'm telling you, they're special. How many times do I have to tell you this? But we call that the paparazzi and it's real. And the people that uh, haven't experienced this, if you are listening or viewing and you don't have have a corgi and you're thinking about getting one definitely prepare yourself for the paparazzi because that absolutely. is real <laughs> absolutely you from from all over the place and i'm i'm sure sam went and with the, those three beautiful girls of yours uh they come up to you uh, all the time um you are oh no oh no i'm a horrible human being um your oldest dog is oh a, jam no, oh labrador the Labrador. I, yes. I kept wanting to say Golden Retriever and I knew it wasn't a Golden Retriever. <laughs> Labrador. Jealous when the uh when when going out with the corgis at all? Um interesting point actually she gets equally the same amount of attention because she's slightly older um yeah. my dogs have quite distinctive collars so my labrador her name is marmalade and she has a red bow collar with white leather dots on it so Everyone always makes sure that they that they give her attention because she looks, um, she's not like a typical Labrador with a tail wagging and so on. I always call her, it's a bit like from Winnie the Pooh, the character Eeyore, that sort of quietly <laughs> depressed donkey. Um, I always say that she's like the Eeyore of Labrador. She kind of comes up to you and again, big watery eyes, just wants your attention. So they can't leave her out. You've got three young ones, obviously bouncing around. So she gets her fair share. Oh, that's oh. good. That is, that's precious. And if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, did you, uh, one of the corgis or maybe all of them met Sharon Osborne recently? Oh gosh, yes. So yeah, it, it had been quite an action packed. <laughs> it was quite an action packed week and we had um, done this morning, uh, we'd done the BBC interview and then on my other half and I, we'd gone into London to queue to see the Queen laying in state on Saturday. So we queued for about 12 hours um, and we got in about 1.30 in the morning to see the Queen in Westminster Hall. So we took the next day off to, oh, it was a Sunday anyway, but um, other than a dog walk, just to sit around on the sofa. And the next day was the funeral, which was our bank holiday, Monday just gone. And I was in my pajamas, sitting on the sofa watching the funeral, and I had a WhatsApp message. Don't know how they got my number, and it was someone from a television show uh, from Talk TV, um, which is where Piers Morgan is now on. And one of his uh, producers contacted me to come onto a panel to discuss all about the corgi. So before I knew it, I was um, in another car going into London <laughs> with all three of the guests, not just Snowden. Um, so I put on my black suit and tie and bits and bobs and before we knew it we were in a studio and Sharon Osborne walked past and I thought oh my goodness because she is such a dog fan um, she has a lot of rescue dogs as well so I learned a lot about her having a chat with her um, lovely lady just exactly what you can imagine and hope that she would be she has 10 dogs four of them are rescues um, she was talking about how she is a part corgi club member she has a pomeranian crossed with a corgi i didn't know that I was, which i was absolutely amazed by so i was rather pleased to welcome her unofficially into the club <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that's so exciting i that what a great story and what a great way to find out from the woman herself that she has a corgi cross <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And so on this panel was um, a gentleman called Christopher Biggins, who's a sort of um, sort of British institution uh, of actors, and then a gentleman called Wayne Sleep, who's a, a very charismatic dancer. Many, many moons ago, Princess Diana did a stage uh, uh, production, um, a, a dance, and that was with him. His name's Wayne Sleep as well. So um, they've all met the Queen um, so they certainly had a one one up over me. I was there with just three lovely girls to chat. <laughs> oh well, and the corgis are the real celebrities in their minds, of course. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, it, it'd been such an 
interesting day for the girls because we've done a long walk in the morning suddenly we're jumping in a taxi going into London <laughs> so the interview started out and I think Snowden fell asleep with her backside to the camera so <laughs> wasn't quite ready she's like oh, I wow. have to have my beauty sleep dad <laughs> absolutely I'll charm them any way I know how <laughs> Well, and you guys are accidental <laughs> celebrities now. So, you know, it's even more important to find that balance when when you are the celebrities yourselves. Okay. I think that, I, I think that we're just trying to we're trying to find our our, our niche. So we've gone into, I think, really talk, not only talking about the Royal Connection, but also just promoting corgis because our numbers here aren't as healthy as they are over there where you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, and part of what we do on Corgi Town USA is we try to guide people uh, because corgis are our favorite and we love them, but they're not for everyone. And people, you know, you want to know before you get them. And we have friends in rescue and especially right here in the States, our rescues are full. It's not just corgis. It's actually all breeds, but yeah. our rescues are full and our shelters are, are filling up. And so we're trying to educate people that, you know, be sure that if you, you want a Corgi, of course they're our favorite, we're gonna tell you all the good, but we're also gonna tell you that they're not for everyone. They are high energy, they shed a lot, they are bossy. They, you know, if, if you're looking for a quiet, obedient lap dog, who no. is hypoallergenic, oh my gosh, no. not a Corgi. <laughs> not a Corgi, not a yeah. Corgi. So, so, and it's, that's why we like to help it with uh, the popularity. Of course, we're glad that, that they're popular and we love them. And we love this community, the way that they they pull people together. Um, but we want everyone to have the facts. And part of that, too, is uh, the over the breeding. Um, I have rescues and breeder purchase. But with the breeding, there are genetic diseases and things that corgis can have. So uh, things like degenerative myelopathy, which, of course, we're very passionate about. I actually have a DM dog. Um, you know, we... We want to be sure that people are doing the proper genetic tests before breeding and that if they do purchase from a breeder, that the breeder does those genetic tests. So that's why we're here. We try to uh, not only entertain our, our dear audience um, with wonderful stories such as your pack, but also educate as well and try to be yeah. try to help the Corgi community that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's really wonderful. Thank so, you. Sam what's your next step now that you have this fame how are you going to parlay that into the corgi message and maybe other corgi things or are you going to be a uh a a a, a, a dadager uh, you know a dadager. A dadager. <laughs> I, was, I knew not, i knew momager and i was like what you, oh dadager, dadager. Uh, like a dadager and, and just be a dad manager or fatherger <laughs> I think I think I think that I, absolutely I, I I agree I think that um continuing their their good work I think it's not about sort of riding that 15 minute coattail it's about um responsibly I think educating people not only about how amazing they are as dogs because their numbers here are are quite slim um most people who I run in, into here in the UK have either never met a corgi at all and they come across three, um, or they have a, a very time-specific reference point. They have a, a, a grandmother or a great great aunt who had a corgi. You're talking a couple of generations back. Their, dare I say, fashionability has been somewhat linked to the queen, but maybe not always in the most positive way when considering that top 10 list of dogs. Nowadays, you were t talking about shedding um, and cockapoos are all the rage here in the UK because they're hypoallergenic. Yes. Um, anything that's sort of mated with a poodle. So you have the smart side, plus also something very, very sweet and um, home and children friendly. Um, you mentioned about the high energy levels. Absolutely. Uh, city living and high density living. Perhaps people don't have time to, or the luxury of space and time to, to really exercise as they warrant and require. So. It really is about, I think, responsible message uh, conveyance. I myself, I'm really passionate, I think, just in corgis and having a, a celebration space for them. I think that's the only way I could really call our Instagram page. Or um, my, my next step at the moment is, um, it was quite recently the Queen's Jubilee um, in the summer, this uh, summer just gone. And so in London, there was something called a corgi trail that was set up. 
and it was lovely sculptures throughout London by different artists, very abstract, very weird and wonderful, some very traditional. And you could take a photograph, they were just all around different landmarks in London. And they're now up for auction. So I am at the moment determined to purchase a couple to gift to the town of Windsor. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll need all the fingers. Um, I really want to gift a few to the town of Windsor so that we can then start our own corgi trail here. We have a lovely sculpture of the Queen and her corgis in bronze in uh, a park uh, called Bachelor's Acre, but but I want more. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. We're going to put all of that positive energy into you winning an auction because we would love for you to have those. We can't think of a better recipient, especially since you're willing to gift them back to the town. Did you see the cake? That corgi cake from the Jubilee? No. Oh my goodness. I reached no. out to the baker. Uh, I don't want to say the name yet because I, I'm reaching out. I'm trying to get them on the show. Uh, but there's a bakery uh, there. The baker made a corgi cake for the Jubilee. And it's absolutely, I mean, amazing. I, I don't know how in the world you could have this kind of skill. It's so lifelike. I will send you some some photos that I have. Oh, I'd love to see. Thank you. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> I'm hoping I can get the baker on the show. I'm sure that they're pretty popular now that it kind of hit social media. But yeah, I hope that you you get those sculptures. We're going to keep all of our paws crossed for you. Thank you. <laughs> our friends run uh, Corgi Beach Day, the Macklemores, and this coming upcoming Corgi Beach Day, they are going to have the biggest corgi sculpture in the world they announced so i'm very wow. curious to see this normally we have a booth at, at corgi beach day but this year we're going to help with uh, the shade out dm booth so if you're a listener if you come to corgi beach day come say hi to me and chuckles and we'll have hammer or dm warrior there at the booth uh, at the shade out dm booth but i'm very curious to see this this sculpture oh absolutely sure. yes. yeah and Thank you for sharing uh, your Sharon Osbourne story. I'm a big Aussie fan. I'm a drummer and um, I love, I love that kind of music and I haven't met Sharon, but I have met Ozzy once. Oh, really? <laughs> I did. And oh, he, he did a book signing and I had all these things that I wanted to ask him. And when I got up, not that I got starstruck, that just the thoughts kind of left me and he signed my book. And then the people running the book signing kind of ran me off. And so I was just like, Thank you very much is all I got out. But he was so sweet because I started to walk away and he said, hey, hey, hey. He yelled at me. I'm going to do my best Aussie impression. Excuse me in my terrible American accent. But but he says, hey. And I was like, what? oh, Aussie wants to talk to me? Okay. So I turned around and he said, you're very welcome. And I was like, oh, Aussie, you're so polite. <laughs> so that's it's, my answer. it's a it's that's a brilliant story of uh, about the fact that he called you back as well and strangely enough I was actually after doing the panel I was a little bit too shy to ask for a photograph and I was supported by one of the production assistants back to the to the lobby and she then sort of had something in her earpiece call her back and she said oh sorry Sharon wants you to go back downstairs she wants a photo of the girls and you I thought, oh, how, how how lovely. I'd love to. And when I was downstairs, I then asked her, would you mind if I took a photo too? And so she put it on Instagram, something lovely such as, look who I've met at Talk TV, Sam Kader, I'm keeping them. And I was amazed that that was going to be on her feed on Instagram. And then also Paris Hilton sent it a heart. And I thought, this is, this is quite a day. <laughs> you are accidental nice. celebrities. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah, but you... who who wouldn't want to meet the girls and have a picture with them? That's right. And you, of course, Sam, <laughs> as the dadager. Absolutely, <laughs> the one with treat, treats in his pockets. <laughs> the magical food man, yes. <laughs> I love that you're going to be taking this and and just using it, uh, using your powers for good and putting the corgi message. And yeah, it. I, I, I can see how here, I think corgis became famous maybe because of the queen and there I could see how it might be like, Oh, it's a, for them versus yes. a for me type of a uh, dog. Yes, absolutely. It's, it, it's, I guess, um, I'm, I'm not sure if they're, they're a status symbol, but I think it's, um, perhaps something that raises an eyebrow. 
when you see a corgi uh, because they are so rare it almost gives uh, an indication of breeding or of social status perhaps as well they're, they're not that common here um, but there is a, there is a good and growing corgi community here in the UK um, you might have seen online the lovely photographs of when corgi meets happen outside Buckingham Palace and all the leaves get attached to the railings um, and there's hundreds of corgis all lined up and they go for a walk in Green Park just next door. So there's a lovely corgi community here in London. It's just building up awareness. Yeah, Some of those are our corgi, fr our uh, Facebook friends. Yeah. And and they posted about it. Like, oh, oh, I know you. How, you know, we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fun seeing all those photos. Well, Sam, yeah. we don't want to keep you all day. We know that you have uh, some walks and some treats to dole out and some some corgi fun to get on with your evening. But I do want to share for the audience, if you want to follow these beautiful corgis, and you do, go to Instagram and it's corgis underscore of, the word of, O-F, underscore Eaton, E-O-T-O-N corgis of Eaton if you want to follow them and Sam I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing your story and uh, sharing the girls with us thank you very much for having me it's been an absolute pleasure oh good I'm glad great getting to know you too and your lovely girls thank you enjoy the rest of your evening Sam thank you all the best take care thank you you too goodbye I'm just giddy now I know <laughs> they're so precious they are they are very very cute and i love that sharon like osborne specifically says bring him back i want a picture with you and the girls that just warms my heart <laughs> yeah yeah well that's i think that's the thing about fur babies um you know people may or may not get along but you bring a fur baby into the mix and then suddenly uh you know, it, 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 it calms situations. It, it, it gives you something to talk about. It, it, it breaks down all those barriers. Yeah. It's uniting. Yeah. And the, very uniting. Yes. Yeah. And the Corgi community is definitely, we're a very rich, rich community. And when we do things like, um, like our DM race that we're doing with our fundraising, and uh, with Chuckle's birthday, the way that the community really comes together is so heartwarming. Uh, so many big hearts in, in the Corgi and Pet community. And it just, it touches me right to my very soul. Aww. Well, audience, again, if you want to follow these precious girls and their dadager, a term recently coined by our very own cat Napoli of Corgi Town USA. Go to Instagram Corgis of Eaton, Corgis underscore of Eaton. And if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, join us. Uh, follow us on TikTok at Corgi Town USA, Instagram, uh, Facebook, if you're still doing that. Uh, we are, have a new episode for you every week, all about the Corgi and dog lifestyle. Follow us. Uh, Give us some messages. Tell us about your corgis. Give us some comments yeah. and tell us what you would like to hear more of. Absolutely. Well, from all of us here at the Corgi community, Candy and Chuckles and Booger and Hammer and Mortimer, Barnabas and Cat. And Digby and Wigan. <laughs> we hope that you have a great night and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye.